Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. This is Garbage of Scarecrow, a sci-fi channel original movie from 2013 about a killer scarecrow that looks nothing like a scarecrow. It looks more like the contents of my toilet after a visit to the Chinese buffet and a swill of Pepto-Bismol. It's, it's an entirely by-the-numbers horror film that doesn't offer anything unique or interesting. It's really not worth thinking about, much less making a video about, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Now, if you're like 12 and you spent your whole life in the city, you might not know what a scarecrow is. It's basically a crude dummy farmers put out in their fields to scare birds away to keep them from eating their seeds and crops. It makes them think there's a guy standing out there, and it works because birds are stupid. Oh, hold on. Yeah, what do you want? Well? Oh, what? You knocked on my door and now you're too good to talk to me? You got a stick up your ass? Is that it? F*** you. The movie starts with a dumb teenage couple pl played by two actors in their 20s, stopping through a cornfield. The boyfriend, who's actually named Chad, convinces his girlfriend, Marcy, to help him scare these two other kids named Tyler and Nikki as revenge for some trespass. Cute. They have time to kill before the victims show up, so they decide to go to the nearby barn to do whatever it is teenagers do when they're alone. Chad tries to climb a ladder, but he causes a big spool with a chain to fall and smash through the floor. Chad and Marcy find themselves in a room under the barn, and Marcy realizes she has a big gash on her leg. The blood touches some nearby tendrils of some kind, and they start moving, causing Marcy to freak out. Chad goes to look, and then a monster hand grabs his head and starts twisting. We cut to our protagonist, some guy named Aaron Harris, sitting in his car next to a sign for the town's 100th annual Scarecrow Festival. The festival has barely any relevance to the plot, so don't worry about it. Aaron looks at a photo, which the camera doesn't hold on long enough for us to look at it, and then uh, he gets out of his car and walks over to a nearby school bus, and it turns out Aaron is some kind of a high school teacher, and he's taking a bunch of kids in detention somewhere. Kids who look like they're not much younger than him. We meet a disposable cast of one-note characters, the stereotypical jock kid, Devin, the nerdy kid, Calvin, the two troublemakers, Tyler and Nikki, the quiet girl, Maria, and the new girl, Beth. Uh, while getting on the bus, Nikki picks Aaron's pocket, but unlike the government, she does it without him knowing. And then Tyler snatches Calvin's sketchbook and shows it to Beth as he shows her a drawing that Calvin did of her to embarrass him. Taren tell Aaron tells Avon to uh, give him their phones, and he locks him in a box. We cut back to the barn where Marcy is still in the hall, screaming at some unseen horror. We then cut back to the bus. Aaron, who's driving the bus by himself for some reason, yells at Nikki and Tyler for making out, and then the bus arrives at the cornfield. Nikki and Tyler antagonize Beth by reciting the nursery rhyme about the killer scarecrow. The scarecrow lives to kill us all. Keep it buried in the Aaron explains this place is supposedly haunted because, according to legend, over 30 murders happened here, but he also points out that it's just a story. He also explains that this is the, the original site of the Scarecrow Festival, but it's been relocated, so they're here to uh, dissemble the Scarecrow and move it to another to the new venue. Uh, that's really the only relevance the festival has to the plot. It's just an excuse to get a bunch of dumb teenagers to this farm so spooky shenanigans can happen. Like the town doesn't have some community organizers or something to take care of this sort of thing. Look, if you ask me, you guys are getting off easy. Doctoring those photos of Chad and Marcy, and then hacking into the school website and posting them and linking them to your Facebook accounts was probably funny, but it was also illegal. Lucky the parents didn't charges. Oh, so that's why Chad and Marcy were planning to scare Nikki and Tyler. I'm glad we cleared up that plot thread. Then some woman named Kristen shows up, who I guess is Aaron's ex-girlfriend or wife or something. Uh, while Aaron talks to her, Nikki uses the key he left in the uh, bus, to, like some kind of idiot, to unlock the box and get her her and Tyler phones back. The gang makes their way to the farmhouse, and Kristen explains to Calvin that this farm has been in her family for over 150 years, and doesn't know the, the, how the legends got started. Aaron realizes Tyler is gone, and Beth said she saw him heading into the barn. But then Aaron pops out of the cornfield and scares Maria with uh, Chad's rubber mask, which he says he found in the field. So I guess Chad just left it out there before he and Marcy went to the barn. Okay. Aaron tells the kids to get to work, and then he talks to Kristen. Kristen says she came back to sell the farm. 
but I was also wondering if she could get back together with Aaron. Aaron essentially tells her to go f*** herself. And then some guy named Eddie shows up. Aaron and Eddie don't get along because Kristen and Eddie used to date before she started dating Aaron, and blah, 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 stupid love triangle bullshit. who cares. Uh, Eddie, tr Eddie gets mad and tries to drive away, but then his truck suddenly won't start back up, which is inconvenient for him, but really convenient to the plot. Then they hear one of the kids yelling in the cornfield. Aaron and the others go running in and find Calvin tied to the scarecrow. It turns out Tyler and Nikki did that to him, but for some reason he didn't start yelling until they were finished, I guess. As Aaron shouts for Tyler and Nikki, Beth screams, and she suddenly gets dragged away to by something. Kristen finds Beth, but then she gets dragged off. Aaron uh, catches up to her, then they run into the farmhouse and try to block the door. But then Nikki's bloody corpse comes crashing through the window, and then gets dragged out again. So I guess Tyler and Nikki are dead. Uh, sometime later, Aaron and Eddie are boarding up with the windows while Calvin tries to call for help on uh, Kristen's phone but he can't get a signal. Devin goes into the basement and finds a bottle of some flammable liquid and a shotgun, and brings them upstairs. Uh, then they think they hear something, so they decide to need this, the guy to stay in the house. Uh, Calvin says it's a scarecrow from the legend, but Aaron says it's probably just an animal. Devin goes upstairs to check on Maria, who's trying to get a signal on her phone. I, I guess she just has her phone back now. Devin gives her uh, half a candy bar or whatever that is, and then nothing happens. Really, much like life itself, this scene is totally pointless. Back downstairs, Kristen manages to find a shotgun shell and gives it to Eddie. Then Beth asks Calvin what he's drawing. He refuses to show her, so Beth shows her some locket she's wearing which has no relevance to the plot. And then she pulls the, I'm a helpless little girl and I need a big strong man trick on him. As then he shows her the sketch that he did of the monster based on the descriptions of the, the, those who saw it. Okay, so somehow Calvin managed to produce a perfectly accurate sketch of this creature based on descriptions. You know, when a police sketch artist produces a sketch of a suspect based on descriptions, they have to ask witnesses several questions to get enough detail, and then go through multiple iterations until they produce a drawing that witnesses say looks like the person they saw. And those are trained sketch artists who have detailed knowledge of human facial structure. But this kid managed to draw an accurate sketch of a creature which isn't even human, based on the testimony of, like, two people who only got brief glimpses of it. Uh, so the fact that Calvin sketched it has no relevance to the plot. It's not like they even show it to anyone, so this is both stupid and pointless. So Aaron says he's gonna go get the bus, but then Maria says she saw Nikki get, uh, take the keys and use it to open the box so she could get her phone, and then she put the keys in her pocket. And she's gone now, so that means the keys are gone. Well, gee, Aaron, I bet you feel like a dumbass now. So then Kristen suggests using Eddie's truck. Eddie says he left the keys in the truck, I guess because that's the thing people do now. And Aaron decides to get the truck and just drive away to get help since they can't all fit in it. So as Aaron and Kristen try to rip boards off the door, Eddie sees Calvin go out one of the windows and runs after him. Calvin makes his way to the truck, but it won't start. And instead of just going out the window that Calvin left through, Aaron and Kristen continue trying to rip boards off the door. Eddie yells at Calvin to get out of the truck, but then he sees the Scarecrow approaching. He tries to shoot it, but the gun backfires in his face, and then we get our first good look at the Scarecrow, which looks nothing like a Scarecrow. So the Scarecrow grabs Calvin and kills him. Everyone else runs outside, and Kristen throws a Molotov at the Scarecrow, but misses and hits the truck, lighting it on fire. Good job, moron. The Scarecrow slinks away, but then suddenly appears behind them, so they all run as the truck blows up. Then we get to see the Scarecrow eat Calvin. Yeah, I guess the Scarecrow eats people. Because Scarecrow's gotta eat, apparently. The gang make their way to the barn, where they see the big hole in the floor, with blood everywhere. The floor suddenly collapses, and they all fall through the floor, under into the room under the barn. And Aaron sees the chains and speculates that the Scarecrow was trapped down here until it recently escaped. Then they find Marcy and Chad's bodies. Sometime later, the gang are still stuck in the hole. Kristen says they need to find a way out, then Beth says, why should we listen to you? This could be our only chance, we should be looking for a way out. Why should we listen to you? So even though getting out of the hole with the rotting corpse is probably a good idea, Beth dismisses Kristen's opinion on the grounds that the killer scarecrow is somehow her fault because it's her family farm. You can't blame Kristen. And why not? It's her farm, her family, the others are dead because of her. Pretty sound logic right there. But Kristen isn't having any of Beth's bullshit. Then Eddie and Aaron find a rope and a plank of wood and use it as a sort of makeshift grappling hook. Alright, I'll go up last. Make sure everybody gets up safe. I have a better idea. 
instead of just expecting everyone here to know how to climb a rope, why don't you, the biggest and strongest guy here, go up first, and then use the rope to pull everybody else up? I guess it doesn't matter because we then cut to the gang looking out the window of the barn to seeing the police car approaching. Apparently somebody noticed the explosion and called the police. I guess the local police station sent a grand total of one officer to go respond to a report of an explosion. Okay. So the officer approaches the house, but our heroes can't shout to him because that will give away their location to the killer Scarecrow, who I guess hasn't thought to look for them in the giant conspicuous barn this whole time. So Aaron, Kristen, and Eddie run up to the police officer and try to warn him, because leaving their hiding place somehow makes more sense to them. But then the Scarecrow materializes from the ground right behind him. The cop falls over, but I guess the Scarecrow isn't interested in him since it goes looking for the others. But then the cop shoots the Scarecrow, but bullets don't hurt him. So then he goes after the cop and kills him off screen. Then Aaron gets the idea to drive away in the police truck, but they need to get the officer's keys, so he and Eddie go into the house to look for him, uh, armed with nothing but a hand scythe and a shovel. Uh, we get a pointless jump scare from Christian, and then the officer's body comes flopping out of a doorway. As Eddie grabs the keys, the Scarecrow's hand comes bursting through a wall, and Kristen just stands there long enough for the Scarecrow to grab her. The kids hear the commotion, so Devin grabs a shotgun out of the police truck and runs inside. But then Aaron s swings the hand scythe into the wall, and even though it only penetrates maybe two inches deep, I guess that is enough to scare the, sc the Scarecrow away. Then Devin comes running in, and the Scarecrow knocks Aaron over. Devin shoots it, and then tries to run after it, but then it gets a drop on him and kills him. So I guess Devin's dead now. They all run outside, leaving the hand scythe behind, even though it's apparently an effective weapon. And then they get in the police truck and drive off. Yeah, that's the sound a scarecrow makes. Hell for crying out loud! Oh, you again. What part of f*** you don't you understand? What are you, some kind of salesman? You're bad at it. Now get off my lawn before I get my broom. You're garbage! What? You don't find garbage. You are garbage. Throw yourself in the trash. Oh, the big man can talk now. You're on the wrong side of the f street, buddy. You're garbage, possum. You have a garbage personality. You have no friends. Hey, that's not true. I got plenty of friends. Friends like... Aaron A.G. Kinney, Alex Bones, Flashes of Magic 95, Bricks of Sticks 99, Charles J. Harris, Charlie, Chocolate Mussolini, uh, Chris Ingot, Proby Gnomes II, Daniel Justice, Delstop, Diesel Weasel, Emperor Regulus Septim I of Cyrodiil, Hey Red and Penna, Jan Guevara, Joel Berg, John Cleveland, John Fortnite, John Wellington, K55, Les Squid de Ke Quebec, Limp, McSquizzy, Michael Lowe, Nicholas, Nicholas Slater, Nighthawk, Noah Bruckner, Noble Team 33, uh, uh, Oda Koratus, Peak T, Paco, Reed Strickland, Reedos, Ricky Baruga, Rowan Scepter, Samurai Bride, Sjord Von Van Bladel, Spectre, Sirsa Fox, The Ghost of Macaulay Culkin, The Sauce God, Twilight City Studios YouTube Channel, uh, Western Reaper, Will Gurnan, Will Corthasi, Corthase, I don't know, Victor Alexandrovich Gontar, and God Howard. You want to die? I never said that. That's a straw man argument. Everything in your life is garbage. You surround yourself with it. You hate yourself. Yeah, I also hate people who wear wicker hats. Kill yourself. Make me. Kill yourself. Grab the knife. End it. I'm gonna end you in a minute. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? Don't you know who I am? I'm a f possum. And I'm a f scarecrow that can talk. I don't care what you are. You don't come up to my house and give me an attitude. What this yelling? This prick came knocking on my door just to start some shit. That dummy. You're damn straight he is. Look, can't keep down. You scared dog. F*** your dog. So Aaron, Chris, and Eddie, Maria, and Beth drive in the police truck and talk about the legend of the Scarecrow, when suddenly the Scarecrow pops out in front of them, causing them to crash the truck. Later that night, everyone conveniently wakes up all the exact same time. I guess the Scarecrow didn't kill them while they were unconscious. Then Aaron smells the fuel leaking and tells the girls to get out. But then Aaron and Eddie stay in the truck and try to use the police radio to call for help. And they keep trying, even though it's obviously broken, instead of getting out of the truck before it explodes. 
that Aaron realizes Eddie is mortally injured, but then uh, the, the Scarecrow grabs Kristen and tries to pull her under the truck. Beth and Maria run away, then Eddie decides to sacrifice himself by pulling out his lighter and rolling under the truck with the Scarecrow and the leaking fuel, lighting it on fire. Uh, we, we cut to Beth and Maria stopping to see the explosion, and then we cut back to Aaron and Kristen running through the woods. And uh, they run into Maria, who I guess ran back to find them. Uh, and then they continue running. Everyone stay close. I don't want to lose anybody in here. So immediately after Kristen tells everybody to stay close, she stops and lets them run ahead of her, I guess because she hears something. Okay, so you're running from a monster, and then you hear something, so you stop and listen for it instead of just assuming it's the monster you're running from? How stupid is she? Uh, what was the point of that? Just so we could have another jump scare? No, really, what does this add to the story? So they all make their way to a house and bang on the door, but nobody answers, so they break in and look around for a phone. But then an irate farmer shows up with a shotgun and accuses them of trying to rob him. Then, like some kind of moron, Aaron risks escalating the situation by trying to knock the shotgun out of the hands of the guy who's already thinking he's in danger and needs to protect himself. Fortunately, the farmer doesn't immediately blow Aaron's head off, so Kristen tells him that her family owns the farm down the road and that there's a monster chasing them. Conveniently, the farmer happens to know exactly what she's talking about, and he explains that Kristen's great-grandfather buried the Scarecrow under their barn a hundred years ago, after it killed most of his family. Nobody knows where it came from or why it kills people, and that the town holds the Scarecrow Festival so that nobody forgets what happened. But I guess they forgot what happened. So Kristen tries to call the police, but the phone's dead. And then the farmer hears something outside, so he decides to go outside because he s somehow figures it would be safer out there. Okay? Then Beth points out that the Scarecrow must be after Kristen, since it was her ancestor that buried it, and suggests giving her to it because the Scarecrow would somehow know who she is, I guess. Obviously, nobody else agrees, so Beth grabs a knife and storms off. We cut to the farmer walking around the shed or whatever, shooting at every noise he hears, and then the Scarecrow pops out from under the ground, and I guess it makes his way up his rectum and emerges from his mouth, killing him. Aaron, Kristen, and Maria go to the barn to try to find a vehicle they can escape in. They find a forage harvester and, thinking they can escape in a vehicle with a top speed of 10 miles per hour, they decide to start it up. As Aaron tries to figure out how to get it moving, Kristen and Maria hear Beth calling for help. Like some kind of idiot, Kristen goes to find her alone. Then Aaron starts up the harvester. Kristen finds Beth and brings her back to the others, but it's a trick. Beth puts a knife to Kristen's throat and makes Kristen call out for the Scarecrow so she can sacrifice her to it. The Scarecrow shows up, I guess because the sound of the loud piece of farm equipment didn't get its attention. So Aaron finds the rope and hooks it onto the Scarecrow, but then Kristen does some inexplicable judo sh** and throws Beth over her shoulder. Aaron throws the rope into the harvester, but then the Scarecrow grabs Beth and drags her w with it into the blades. I guess that was enough to gum up this machine which was designed to chop up hundreds of pounds of silage per hour, so it stops. They realize the Scarecrow probably isn't really dead, so they need to get moving. Kristen says she saw a motorcycle in the barn, so Aaron and Kristen go to find it, and for some reason, Aaron tells Maria to stay behind and watch for movement, even though it should be obvious by now that splitting up is a bad idea. But then Kristen and Aaron come back and tell Maria the motorcycle isn't working, so real there's no point in that. And predictably, the Scarecrow reaches out from the harvester and grabs Maria, clawing up her leg. Yeah, Scarecrows have claws. They manage to pry her away from it and run into the woods. So as they stumble through the woods, Kristen decides to split off from the others, figuring that it's her the Scarecrow is after. Aaron and Maria stop so Aaron can wrap a belt around Maria's leg to stop the bleeding. And then they get, to, they get up and just, just walk again. Meanwhile, Kristen makes her way back to the farm and cuts her hands on a pitchfork so she can rub blood on the cows, hoping the Scarecrow will go after them and buy them some time to escape. Sometime later, it's daytime again, and Kristen catches up to Aaron and Maria. Maria is too weak to continue walking, so Kristen helps her onto Aaron's back so he can carry her, but then the Scarecrow throws what appears to be some kind of lawnmower blade at them, impaling Maria and Aaron together. Kristen pulls the blade out and uses it to decapitate the Scarecrow. And then she and Aaron run. But then the Scarecrow regenerates again, I guess it eats Maria's body. 
Christian and Aaron make their way to a river and have to find a way across. Since Aaron can't swim with his injury, they decide to head to the nearby boat graveyard to find a boat that can take them across. On the way, Aaron nearly passes out. Okay, so Aaron got stabbed with a lawnmower blade in his upper back, and it got stuck in there, so it must have gone a few inches deep, meaning it cleaved through several ribs and likely punctured a lung or severed his brachiocephalic artery. So he should be dead, or at least too badly injured to keep walking. But I guess movie injuries are only as severe as the plot demands. That's why people in movies die immediately after getting shot in the stomach, but can also casually walk off getting blown through the air by an explosion. So Kristen and Aaron manage to make their way to the boat graveyard and see some lifeboats on a ship and figure they can use one to get across the river. But then they hear redneck music playing from a nearby guard booth. They try to ask the guard for help, but find that his face has been ripped off. Aaron tells Kristen to get on the ship as he tries to call for help on the radio. Of course the radio doesn't work. And then Aaron sees the scarecrow following Kristen into the ship. And now, even though he has a big hole in his back, and he was barely able to walk before, he's suddenly able to run after Kristen. Aaron finds Kristen, but then the Scarecrow shows up, so Aaron just tackles the stupid thing and they fall into the water. And then I guess Kristen wanders around the ship and finds a fire axe. And then she hears some labored breathing and goes to investigate. The movie does that thing that horror movies always do when the character walks as slowly as possible, because they think drawing it out is how you build tension. When really, I just want the movie to be over already. Kristen finds Aaron laying on the floor. Aaron tells her to run. Then the Scarecrow's arm bursts through his chest. So I guess Aaron is dead now. Uh, the, the beginning of the movie made it seem like he would be the main character, but uh, I guess not. Kristen uses the axe to make a noise to get the Scarecrow to chase her into the bottom of the ship, as if it wasn't already chasing her. Uh, she finds a big crank handle and starts turning it, I guess because she just somehow knows what it does. But then it is not really clear why she turns it or what doing so accomplished. Kristen walks over to a big fuel tank, breaks the thing off, and uses the axe to make sparks to ignite the fuel. And the Scarecrow keeps grabbing at her feet as she tries to climb up a ladder, but she manages to escape and trap the Scarecrow inside. Then the ship blows up as Kristen runs out. Then the camera zooms in on the radio talking about the Scarecrow Festival, and the movie ends with these weirdly brief credits that only last about 30 seconds. So that's Scarecrow. You know, when you think about it, there's no real reason the monster in this movie had to be a Scarecrow other than the title. It could have just as easily been a werewolf, an alien, or any other monster. And the monster doesn't even look like a Scarecrow, so why even call it that? What this movie needed was some good farm-related kills. He should have stabbed somebody with a pitchfork, ran somebody over with a combine harvester, drowned somebody in a grain bin, or stuck one of those cow milking machines to somebody's back and had it suck out their blood, and then used one of those big irrigation things to spray blood all over. I mean, if you're gonna have a farm-themed villain in your horror movie, why not commit to it? Whatever, I'm going outside. You're still here? Kill yourself. You first. What go on? This guy keeps telling me to kill myself. Jesus Christ. Now be quiet. You be quiet, big stupid asshole.